Good morning, YouTube booktube. <clears throat> this is Johnny. It's, I noticed it's been at least three or four days since I made a video. Thought I would say uh, Happy New Year. Hope you had a blessed Christmas. Today here in West Michigan. Well, you know, we might live in the middle of Michigan on the west. We live near Lake Michigan, about 15 minutes from Lake Michigan. But here in Holland, Michigan, it is 9.41 in the morning. It's a Sunday. It's a new year. It's January the 2nd, 2022. And it's a Sunday. My wife went to church. Uh, I fed the birds. Made a fresh pot of coffee. Writing in my diary, we are in January 2022, starting over. If you want to see pictures of my 2021 diaries, you can go to my online diary, Crooked Fingers and Live Journal. I always post photos. Also, I post it. The last couple of days I went through my diaries and listed the books I had read throughout the year from January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December, and I listed the books. If you want to see what I read, I, I read a lot of theology. Uh, I, did, I read some nonfiction. I read some novels and... Uh, so if you want to see the my reading life, <laughs> you can go to my online diet, Crooked Fingers, and see the listings of the books I read throughout the year. I thought about, I think last year, I went through the list and mentioned five nonfiction and five fiction books that I had read in that year that stood out in my mind, and I still might do that this week. I'm not really sure. First, I gotta find the books. <laughs> Some of those books, I don't remember where they're at down here. As you all know, I uh, cleared out our library of a couple thousand books. I'm still finding books that I'm looking for and I think, oh, I can't find them. I must have gotten rid of them. But today in my January 2nd, 2022 diary, I'm on page four. Here we go again. Uh, I'm on page four for the year 2022. And I thought what I'd do in this video is do a, uh, a book haul. Uh, I, I've mentioned that um, I go to Blue Stockings Bookshop here in Holland, Michigan. Uh, I, do, I took a lot of books there when I was going through our library and I got in-store credit. And she had the, the end of the year uh, book sale. She tries to get rid of the books in her bookstore and she has a, a dollar a bag sale. And I got two dollars worth of bags of books. They're like those cell phone, they're like plastic bags. They're not paper bags. But I filled those up and I had a coupon so I got all these books free. <laughs> and I just went through there and grabbed things that looked interesting and things that I collect. So I shot. I thought I showed these in this video this morning here on this January the second, two thousand twenty-two Sunday morning. This my wife went to the Blue Stocking book book sale before I did. That was last Monday. Last week Monday, I went Tuesday morning. Monday, I volunteered at the Book Nook, and Carol came in and said, why don't you go to the book sale, I'll cover for you. And I wasn't really in the mood to go to a book sale up that last Monday. But Tuesday morning, I got up, and the weather was fine. There was no snow. It's been snowing here, very bitter cold. But I went last Tuesday to this book sale. But she went Monday, and she found a couple books that she thought I would like. One of the books she got me was The Chief, The Life of 
William Randolph Hearst by David Nassau. I had this book already in a paperback edition. So she got this for me. She didn't know if I, I had this book. Uh, but this was a... Uh, I had it in paperback, so I, I kept the hardback. And I took the book... I'm taking the paperback to the book nook. And then she found this book for me, Carol, my wife. The Man Who Would Be King, the First American in Afghanistan. It's a biography of a man who lived during the 19th century. He was an American. He was a Quaker. Uh, this is by his life, and this is by Ben McIntyre. And uh, I read some of this. I read about 51 pages, but I haven't really gotten much into it. So she got me this book. And then I went Tuesday, and these are the books that I, that I just grabbed for two dollars. I had a coupon so I got them free. I got this book. It's called The Spiritual Tourist, A Personal Odyssey Through the Outer Reaches of Belief by Mac Mick Brown. I like books looking at people, right, books on different religious, uh, different religions or people's spirituality, things like that. And I like the cover and I have all kinds of books like this. I don't necessarily agree with them, but it's kind of a memoir looking at different religions, the spiritual tourists. This is a novel by Herman Hesse that I did not have in my Herman Hesse collection. Uh, Rochelle. I have the, I think I've showed you in the past my Herman Hesse collection. I didn't have this one. Uh, it's not in the best shape, but I didn't have it in my Herman Hesse collection. And so I got it. Herman Hesse, I started reading back when I was in high school, about 1968. The Glass Bead Game, Steppenwolf. Uh, he wrote all kinds of books. Uh, Beneath the Wheel, Journey to the East, Steppenwolf, Siddhartha. Those are the kind of books I read when I was in high school. And I, I did reread a couple of years ago, The Glass Bead Game. So I got that. This is a, a book by Richard Wright. These are novella, Uncle Tom's Children. He wrote Native Son, which is a very famous uh, black American classic. He, uh, he wrote Black Boy, Native Son, uh, so I picked this little book up. I, I thought I had an edition of Native Son. I know I read it years ago, but I can't find it. So, but I picked this up. This is a book uh, on the lives of poets. Uh, Twain's English author series on William Butler Yeats. By editor by Kenley E. Robe. I think this is just different essays on the poet W.B. Yeats, which I, I collect uh, a huge collection of his books. He, he wrote plays, he wrote poetry, he wrote criticism, I have his diary. He's one of the early modernists. Then this is Graham Swift. He's an, a British writer I collect out of this world. I had this already, but I wasn't sure. But I grabbed it, so I'll take this to the book nook Monday. Also, I had this in paperback. This is a writer from the 80s, Jay McIntyre, Story of My Life. This is a hardback. This is a first edition. I just grabbed this. I, I, I reread really him a lot. Uh, I really liked his novel, Bright Light, Big City. Years ago I read that, and ever since I read that, I collect his writings. And this is Atlantic Monthly Press. So maybe it's not a first edition. It doesn't look like it now. It says first printing. Uh, copyright 19, 1988. But now I have a hardback. I probably keep the paperback because I, it's a vintage. 
and I like vintage paperbacks. I had this awesome paperback. This is uh, uh, Dave uh, Doris Kern. She's a very famous American historian. This is when she was really young. I think this is one of her first uh, books that she wrote. I, ha I collect all her writings. I have them over there. But this was an early, she wrote a book called Lyndon Johnson and the American Dream. And this came out in 1976. Uh, Johnson lived from 1908 and he died in 1973. Very famous president, uh, vice president during the Nixon. And, and so I picked this up. This is a hardback. I have the paperback. It's a younger picture of her. It's in pretty good condition. Like I said, I got free. This is another book. I have a couple books by this guy. His name is J. Christopher Herod. This is on Napoleon Bonaparte in Egypt. I have, uh, he wrote a book, another book on, on um, Napoleon Bonaparte, The Age of Napoleon. I think I have over there in my world history collection. So I picked this up. I collect books on Napoleon Bonaparte. It's somebody I've always read about and been interested in, and I haven't gotten around to reading him, but I always collect those books, and someday I hope to get into him. This book I had, and I can't find it, but I found another copy of it. It's the Empathy Exams or Essays by Leslie Jameson. I had this and I can't find it, but mine, this is a signed copy. Uh, and uh, there's kind of bookmarks in it. It's kind of crazy. Book, book, looks like some young child's mom had this and put him in here. There's also the woman went to a book signing which is listed here of the writer Leslie Jameson so that was in the book so empathy exam essays winner of the Grey Wolf Prize the Grey Wolf Press nonfiction prize Leslie Jameson I had this and I can't find it but now I have another copy this is a very famous uh, New Testament scholar, Oscar Coleman. I have several of his books, and this is his essays on the Lord's Supper or the Eucharist. Yeah, I have uh, his book. Uh, I have all kinds of books by him, and I got that. This is a poet I collect, uh, James Morrell, The Scattering of Salts. He's one of my favorite poets, and I found this. at the Blue Stocking uh, used book sale. I have several volumes of his poetry. I can't, I can't, this is a Polish intellectual Marxist writer. I can't pronounce his name, but this is The Year of Dreaming Dangerously by Slavjo Zizek. I can't pronounce his name, but he's very famous. I have another book of his that our oldest son left. Uh, he studied when he was in uh, Michigan State. He had a bunch of books by him, and I kept them, and they're down there somewhere. But I took this just because it looked interesting. The Year of Dreaming Dangerously. This was published in 2012. I had this already. This is a Mark Twain, Puddinhead Wilson, but I like these uh, Penguin English Library editions, and it was free. So I had this in a multiple volume, but this is a separate volume. I like the cover. This is a memoir uh, called Honky by Delton Conley. Uh, I like memoirs. He grew up in Harlem. 
New York and he was white. That's why he's called Honky. It says, Dalton Conley is an associate professor of sociology, director for the Center for Advanced Social Science Research at the New York University. Previously taught in the departments of sociology and African American studies. He is the author of Being Black, Living in the Red Race, Wealth, and Social Policy in America. I assume that he is white, but I could be wrong. Yeah, it says one of the few white boys in the neighborhood mostly of black and Puerto Rican housing projects in Manhattan, Lower East Side. Anyway, it's about his memoir. This is uh, studies and dogmatics. This, she didn't have the whole set. I don't know how many volumes there are, but she had for sale for 50 cents. Bookhauer's studies and dogmatics on sin. So I just grabbed it. I like to have the whole set if I could find it used really cheap. The first part's kind of underlined, but most of it's not. And it's a good reference. If you're going to study on sin, it's good to have this if you're into Reformed theology. In the last book, I, this is a person I came across. He was friends with Von Wickbrooks way back there in the 30s and 20s. His name was Louis... Uh, Louis... Utrameyer, he wrote all these anthologies on poetry and just, if you look him up, there's this huge amount of things that he put up. But this is his book, Lives of the Poets, The Story of 1,000 Years of English American Poetry by Louis Altermeyer. So I got this, it's really old. It's from Southside High School Library. But um, here are the stories of the lives of practically every, practically every poet in the English language considered of major importance by today's critical standards. Together with their lives, there's an evaluation of their work, examined in the light of ever-growing literature, literary criticism. This came out in a pretty old book, um, 1959 it came out. But I, I collect books on poetry, poets, poetry, criticism, things like that. So that's what I got. I got Lies of the Poets, a book on the doctrine of sin from a reformed theological perspective. I got a memoir of a guy growing up among African Americans and Puerto Ricans in the Lower East Side of Manhattan called Honky by Delton Conley, Putin Head, Wilson by Mark Twain. Uh, I think this goes into all the political upheaval that was going on around 9-11. Uh, Air, Arab winter, spring, summer, and fall. Walk him to the desert of post-ideology, the return of the evil ethic thing just kind of a little mind thing, a little intellectual stimulation, the year of dreaming, dreaming dangerously, some poetry, the scattering of salts by James Morrell, uh, a German theological treatise on the Eucharist by Oscar Coleman, essays by Leslie Jamison, Bonaparte's campaign when he went down into Egypt, Bonaparte in Egypt by J. Christopher Herod. Biography of Lyndon Johnson, The American Dream by Doris Kearns. A novel by James, excuse me, Jane, J. McEnery, Story of My Life. A novel by Graham Swift, Out of This World. A book examining the poetry of W. William B. Yeats, William Butler Yeats, or Yeats. A novellas by Richard Wright, uh, Uncle Tom's Children. Herman Hess, Roselle, a novel. Book on spirituality, cosmic spirituality. Uh, 
non-biblical spirituality, the, the spiritual tourist by Mick Brown. The man who would be with King, the first American in Afghanistan. This takes place in the early 19th century in Afghanistan by Ben McNary. And then you have the great uh, Ralph, William Ralph Hearst, the chief. He was uh, very wealthy. He was a, owned newspapers. I think even Mark Twain wrote for him. And uh, I had this in paperback. My wife found a hardback. So that's uh, the Blue Stocking Bookshop used book sale. I have books from the Book Nook and over there that I've gotten the last couple of times I volunteered at the Book Nook. I haven't gone to thrift stores around here due to the weather. I did go to a thrift store a week ago. I told you that animal rescue place after I had my doctor's appointment finding out about my leg. And I'll show those in a, a video this week. So I hope you had a good new year, that you will have a good new year. Do thank you for the new subscribers. Do thank you for all your comments. Do uh, pray that you have a good reading week and uh, stay safe. We have this COVID surge. Get vaccinated. Wear a mask. Get a booster. Pray that the Lord will hold back the plague. And until next time, I don't really have. Uh, I have. Bo I have new books that have come in the mail too that I'll show in the video. Most of them are used books, used books uh, on Mark Twain. And I got a book on uh, a Penguin classic, but I'll show those in this video, next video. So yeah, it's a year, January 2022. I'm reading for devotion still, Rudolph of Saxony. The Life of Jesus Christ, Part 2, Volume 1, Chapters 1 to 57. I'm on Chapter 26, Jesus Prepares to Enter Jerusalem. I'm on page 400, no, 397. This is Part 2 of Volume 1. I already read Part 1. Volumes 1 and 2, and this is Part 2, Volume 1. Part 2, Volume 2 comes out in March, and that will complete the whole four-volume spiritual classic, The Life of Jesus Christ by Ludolf of Saxony. Really enjoying this, really being blessed. Above all, always read the Bible. Read it, meditate upon it, digest it, chew it, contemplate it, ponder it. And may it dwell in our hearts richly. Uh, we are blessed in the new year, 2022, to eight, as we can pick up the Bible and read it and pray for the Holy Spirit for illumination and enlightenment. So once again, I hope you're all doing well. I'll, I'll close. Until next time, bye.